Look at that. Look at that. That is like a volcanic eruption. And, and that was before the actual combat damage. Pretty sick. Welcome to Jurassic Park. Today, we're looking at Hwatli, Poet of Unity, which is a pretty sweet way to tutor for your favorite dinosaurs. Granted, it will take you a bit of time. You have to pay three to get her out, pay five to flip her, then wait a turn and then wait another turn and another turn. So there's a lot of kind of bureaucracy involved in this. There's a lot of queue times and waiting. But once you do, you're going to get one of your favorite dinosaurs. And we've got Zakama, Gishath, Galta and Maverin, all the big daddios of the dinosaur world. Let's see how many of these we can get out in today's video. Okay, this is a pretty decent starting hand. A bit of mana ramping, kill spells, and a big payoff with Koglet and Yudaro, which is big monkey, big dinosaur, big turtle. It's a bit strange how there's two creatures on the artwork, but three types. So that is a bit of a kind of tonal dissonance there. But yeah. This has so many words on it as well. I think we're just going to keep ramping. And maybe we go for another green source. Because we do need double green eventually for the Kogel and Yudaro. And yeah, now we're off to a fantastic start. We can go for Hoatli in the following turn. And this deck is very fair. For those of you that don't like absolute tier one, this could be the deck for you. So they're going to start drawing cards. Nice. Yeah, I like the idea of just us keep drawing into lands. And then get a white source here. Now, it's very unlikely that they're going to have a mass board wipe. So committing to the board like this, I believe is okay. And we even have the one white mana up to exile the Nissa if they, if they want to do that. But yeah, we're in a very commanding position here. So we'll respond to that so they don't get any double land triggers here. I can't really see them coming back from this with mono green, to be honest. So it does feel a little bit difficult for them to come back at this point, especially with no like ramping creatures into big stuff. Because mono green, when you're facing it, probably one of the safer colours to face in the fact that if they don't have the ramp, they're not really disrupting you, they're not really taking at your creatures very easily. So what can we do here? Go for the big boy. Okay, so let's just have it fight the Lanar Elves, get rid of their blocker, and just swing in. It was tempting to give it Trample and Haste, or even we could have even discarded it to kill the Tribute to the World Tree, but I think having a 7-7 seven, seven on, a, on a field against a green opponent without any defense is probably the better way to go there. Four mana to take it out is it's okay. It's so peculiar how they choose to put what words they choose to put on cards. Because if you read that bottom ability, it's essentially reads as cycling, discard, to draw a card. But they wrote it in a super long way, and I know why they did that, because they don't like to have too many keywords in a set, even though this set was wacky, it had so many, so many things. Nods to old cards. So it's peculiar why they just couldn't work cycling onto this. Um, and I, I don't know. Functionally, is it different to cycling? Shuffle. I mean, it says shuffle it into your library. But you could have... I guess they made it awkward, right? Because they wanted it to be... They wanted it to have the same ability as Yudaro, which goes back into your deck. So they couldn't make it straight up cycling, which is a bit awkward. This still can't attack or block unless we've got seven, three, four, five, six. Um, right. We're not going to attack with Hoatli anyway, so let's just flip it here. Get some dinos. Which is pretty sweet. And then we're going to swing in with the Kogla and Yudaro here. And then I think we're also going to go for the Kinjali Sunwing. Mainly because having their stuff comes in coming in tapped, it's it's going to be a humongous ag aggression move for us. No blockers next turn, or any turn thereafter. To be honest, if they keep playing stuff, it's going to be tough for them. Like 
One thing you could put in the deck to make this go off even faster is include a few proliferation effects, which I haven't actually done. Um, but in hindsight, maybe I should have because there's so many stages to this saga and it's the most crazy saga really because it's it's five stages and yeah, that was just too much pressure. But as I was saying, yeah, five stages to that one card is it, it's, it's a lot. All right, we've got a bit of ramp, draw and dinosaurs. What more could you really ask for? Versus Goshen Tai. Yes, this is a tough one. Definitely is. So, Otapak Huntmaster. Hmm. Yeah, annoyingly, this doesn't just tap for regular mana. It's dinosaur specific, but giving something haste as well is kind of nice. Weaver of Harmony. Um, I guess we can just... We'll go for Huatli to get ourselves an untapped mana source next turn. And that way we can ensure that we can go for something like the Trapjaw Tyrant next turn and start swinging in. But yeah, this is going to be a tough build considering they have loads of blockers for free. Inquisition is going to get rid of the... Nothing? Everything in our hand costs four or greater. This is an illusion. The game shows you the reduced cost, you see. Or do we go for the... Let's go for Garden Project. Let's be greedy here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So yeah, now we're going to start drawing cards. When we play any dinosaur. Dinosaurs galore. Ocean Tiger gets a blocker. So now we need Trample, really. Okay. Four. Yeah, let's go for this. Yeah, I guess we can just leave back the blocker. No need to be too aggressive considering they ha we haven't got Trample on here anyway. I mean, maybe attacking was the right thing to do there. Binding, that's a shame. So that's going to kill the trap draw. Yeah, that's a shame. Damn it, man. Facing some crazily powerful decks tonight. Just so many refined decks like Goshen Tai. Um... Six. Ah, let's go for something else big. Ooh, okay. An extra hit, that's nice. Well, let's start attacking in. I feel like we just being defensive is is just not gonna happen here. That's seven damage, that's decent. Especially with next turn, if we go for Gold Turn Maverin with a 12 12 with haste and trample, that could be game over. It could actually be game over. So, we shall see. Bone Horde exiles top two on the upkeep. You may play one. If it's the exile land, you get a 3 1 dinosaur. Wow. That's really good. Just randomly making dinosaurs. Wandering Emperor, so that can exile the Bone Horde. I am the Emperor of Kamigawa. Drag Dracosaur? Although that I think that, that was a silly move, really. Because if they did that at Flash B, they could have actually got the Golden Maverin when it attacked. Mm. Yeah, because now that means they have to. Right? They have to block? Strange. Yeah, they they played the Wandering Impro at the very worst timing there. Very strange. Alright, this is not too bad. We're drawing a lot of high CMC cards today, I've noticed. It's kind of strange. Just anecdotal patterns. There's no rhyme or reason sometimes. You just get pretty unlucky. And today, yeah, I'm hardly drawing one and two drops. 
bit peculiar, but there you go. Camera shell. Might be something to come down next turn to give us some mana. Or maybe Rhythm of the Wild. Hmm. But then they're going to have Goshen Tai. Let's have Camera shell, I think. The fact they ramped is pretty annoying because now they can go for Goshen Tai and it's. Oh! I did not expect that. Okay, things have slightly changed. Stelling Grove. Don't really care about that too much. Four mana. Let's trade our one mana for two more. I think that's a fair trade. Red and white. Yeah, so now we have the Elswith Conquer's death. We can we can deal with the Goshen Tie now, which is nice. I mean it's Sigil of the Empty Throne. Ugh. That's very, very strong as well. That's probably gonna win the game if we don't deal with that. Goshen Tie, but yeah, we have we have to get rid of the sigil here. And do we want the Goshen Tie? Not really. I'd rather keep the mana for other uses. Sithis. Oh, baby. Okay. An idyllic tutor to get any enchantment. Was it going to be Smothering Tithe? Sanctum of All. That's very, 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 very powerful indeed. Although they can't cast it because Elspeth conquers death. So let's swing in. I think we should be in a good situation with Tamiyo Safekeeping, let's be honest. Yeah, because with the Safekeeping, it means that even if they have a Destroyal Creatures, we give Galta Indestructible. So in hindsight, we probably should have played it before we attacked to get ourselves a trigger, but... Oh well. So they, they needed one more mana to go for the Sanctum of All here, which they didn't have. And let's just pray they don't have a way to exile the Galta or make us sack it, because that would be pretty bad. Hmm, interesting. What are they going to do? Settle the wreckage? Nothing to return, which is a bit sad. Void Rend. Protection? Will this just win us the game? Unless they've got another spell to kill it with. Oh, baby. Can't be countered, but it can't be targeted, my friends, so touche. To fairy's protection. Oh, that's cheeky. Okay. Fine. You're going to play cheeky. The cheekiness has arisen. So they bought themselves one turn, basically. Whenever you attack, we still get a trigger. We don't have to deal damage. It's just an attack trigger. Oh no, I should have created the greatest power among... Oh, other attacking creatures. Okay, fair enough. Ah yes, the other part is the thing that makes it annoying. Now we go for Rhythm, and then we can surprise them with some um, speedy dinosaurs in the following turn. So they don't know that we have 11 extra power in hand here. They don't know that. Sanctum of All is going to come down. So let's see if they have an answer for all of our stuff. Our oh, things can't be counted as well. <clears throat> oh my goodness, that would have been brutal. Lightning Helix as well as two dinosaurs. Crazy. All right, let's keep this. Give it a go. Our, our removal isn't existent in this hand. So we're going to have to hopefully get some kind of a board wipe. Um, to deal with the clones. I have this deck in Paper Commander and it's pretty good. In 1v1 it's a lot better because it just... the the additional creatures it makes, it's, it's very hard in 1v1. In 3-4 in to four play, I think it's pretty balanced. I think it's fine just because there's so many more players in removal. Off-colour fetch lands there, which is something that a lot of people do. I don't tend to do that myself i think probably because i've got ocd and i don't like seeing 
black cards. Although this isn't black, it's 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 still got the colour black on it. So yeah, that's just my silly OCD that that is. Um, broken bond. Do we care about that, or do we just want to go for the back alley? Let's do this, and then next turn we can go for ranging raptors. Uh, get ourselves another land, and I think it's pretty awesome. Like if we can keep the back alley gardener alive, that is because this is got MVP written all over it. It's a mythic for a reason. It's just a shame it's not a real card. It is alchemy only. Whenever another creature comes in, seek a land, put it into play tapped. Triggers only once each turn. It's just lovely. Wonderful card. Dragon's Horde, one, two, three. Oh, okay, so now we have another reason to use Broken Bond. So he gets out of land. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. So let's kill the Dragon's Horde, otherwise we're going to be facing the Miriam one turn sooner than we should. Nice. And now if they use a board wipe that deals damage, we get to get a land and put it on the battlefield as well. So Raging Raptor has proven to be really quite good here. Gain control until this leaves the battlefield. Steel effects is not something I was expecting to see in in their dragon build. But there you go. Okay. Annoyingly, we've got Wrath of God there. Um, let's just play this out. Not going to get any value for this, but yes, that is a shame that they stole our thing for a turn. I mean, on the big I mean, I get that a Chrome War is it's decent, but is a synergy with this? Not that I can see. I mean, is a synergy with Wrecking a Bankbuster? Not that I can see either. But then again, you know, people, it's nice to see different cards being used. I shouldn't really complain. Um, it's just my tactical, my tactical brain. So they get a land and they can steal a human artifact. That could be good if that hit the right things, but. So we have the Wrath of God. I'm temp I don't know. Should I use this Wrath of God? We'll see about that. How much mana do we have? Okay, so we're going to swing in with the Raptors first. Because then if they... Oh, they have to attack. Oh, the Echo one makes us have to... Okay. So do we just use Fateful Absence then? This actually works out pretty well in a strange way because the Ranging Raptors will survive because it has high toughness. So anything with high toughness... Oh no, they can crew it in response. Oh damn, okay, that that's a bit of a gotcha moment there, isn't it? So... 4-4. Four, four. That's a shame, yeah. Oh well. So we get a land. It, that didn't exactly work out as I wanted to... We will get the back alley guard in the back. Mm -hmm. So now it's a question of do we just board wipe, kill the bank buster? We're not going to be able to use this next turn anyway. This is actually really tricky. I'm going to keep the Lotus Cobra. If we do this. Yeah, let's just do this. I don't really want to lose the back alley, Garner. Okay, fine. Yeah, we lose the Wrath of God. We lose the Wrath of God, but... And we also lose the Cobra. So, in essence, the, the Wrath of God would have just killed... The Reckon of Bankbuster. So would I have been happy with that? Probably not, yeah. I think I made the right decision there. Especially given that if we go for Huatli next turn, we can also flip her in the same turn because there's eight mana to do that in one go. So sometimes it's nice to have all the mana up front. It's like paying off your... paying it off in one go. And also they do board wipe here. We can re-establish with her as well, getting two more dudes. Invasion of Tarkir is going to do... two plus X to something. They're going to kill the Hatcher. They'd rather do that than play Lathless. Huh. Time Warp. Okay. Miriam. Right, so they're going to get two Lathlesses. Intriguing. Well, I guess we'll get a couple of lands here. 
I suppose we can try and make him a bit bigger. Ah, damn. That's a shame. That time warp kind of pushed them forward a bit too far, really, for my liking. Guess we get to ramp quite a bit. We can play two spells here, which means back alley garden is going to get bigger and bigger. So we don't have to flip the Hawatli just yet. Lots of lands is nice. So that's now a 6-7, which means it's, it's pretty good. I mean, they can obviously chump with the Bank Buster if they want to, but they get into the point now where their life total is going to become meaningful. So they take this. They're going to be pretty low. Down to 9. Wow. The only thing I am scared of is if they have anything with haste. But they're at 9, which is really risky. This becomes a dragon as well, but that would mean they have to hit this rather than us. Can we do it? Can we do this? Double Lathless is pretty terrifying because whenever they play a dragon, they'll get two dragons. Two 6-6 six, six blockers. Yikes. Hmm. And then if they attack that, they get another dragon. I don't know about this, guys. I really... We're going to need something fantastic on top. Luckily, we have all the mana in the world, so... What the hell? Non-token. Get rid of that time warp. Yeah, so basically we die here. How did they get... Oh, because that came in... Oh my god, that that so that swung the that swung the game so much in their favor there. Yeah, I, d I think we're just dead now. Yep, we are just absolutely dead. Even if we flip this, as if they went from Miriam to two Lathuses in a turn, and then flipping that into creating six dragons in a single turn, and then we turn Clothes offline as well. Yeah, okay, cool. We'll give them the glory. No point of attacking, they'll just block. Just finish us off. So also, whenever they play... Oh, no, sorry. Whenever a dragon, you control attacks, two damage to any target. What the hell? Two of those out. <laughs> wow, now that's, that's a spectacular finish. That really is. So they're going to deal four damage for every attacker and a glory bringer times two. What the hell? Okay. Not going to lie, that is a pretty cool field they had from literally nothing. Wow. That is impressive. That really is a lot of dragons. Quite intimidating. And I'm actually a bit jealous. Lapness will have a non token create 5 5. Non token create 5 5. Yeah, cool. Well, at least they're doing the tactical thing and just killing us with the two damage triggers rather than aiming for all our creatures, which doesn't really make a bit of difference. Just kill us quickly. Look at that. Look at that. That is like a volcanic eruption. And, and that was before the actual combat damage. Pretty sick. So how do I feel about this commander? Um, well, I'd say she's a bit too slow, to be honest. She doesn't remove anything when she comes in. She does draw you a card, which is nice. But is that really enough these days? Um, the, the way I judge cards has to change and adapt with the times. So, unfortunately, yeah, I think she's too slow. The fact you have to wait like five turns to give your stuff double strike and trample, it's fair, but in 1v1, you're not even going to make it to the third the third part of the saga. So, in playing her, it, it yeah, it reveals the truth. She's just too slow. As I said it in the gameplay at one point, um, if you proliferate, then yeah, it does actually speed it up. But proliferation is something that I didn't really want to go down because it, it doesn't really synergize with anything else in the deck. It is awesome to use your favorite dinosaurs and by no means um, should this deter you from giving it a go. Definitely give it a go. Maybe take out some of the more expensive dinosaurs because I found it a bit of a struggle to, to cast them. 
There's a weird anomaly where I kept going second as well. I don't really know how to explain it, guys. I really wish there was a scientific method to just, like, tell you guys. But because it's just all anecdotal and from experience, you know, I've played this game for years now, and it just, some stuff just feels strange. Um, that's all I can really say. I don't really want to go too much into it because you get arguments from both sides saying, oh, the shuffle is rigged and blah, blah, blah. But, <clears throat> yeah, some days it just feels weird. It feels like it's stacked against you, especially when there's only powerful commanders. And yes, I do use powerful commanders as well, but that's just part of the channel. We want to use lots of different things here to give lots of different opinions and views of the whole game. I kept drawing back Ellie Gardner. That was strange as well. This was in like the majority of my games. I'd say I probably won about 30 to 40 percent to be honest finding you some of the best games to watch was was quite challenging definitely low power ranking and i didn't hit removal enough i kept thinking oh i just have a few more removal spells it'll be fine I mean, we've got a lot right we've got fragment reality swords lightning bolt fateful absence get lost a braid and a lightning helix that's seven just there we've got two board wipes cause with conquer's death Trapjaw Tyrant, sort of removally. And yeah, I think that's decent. It's very creature heavy. But yeah, it definitely does struggle. Um, the deck list will be in the description below. So yeah, give it a go. Have a tussle with the list and see maybe you can make it better than I did. Tell me how your experience goes. And yeah, if you want to support the channel, you can by becoming a channel patron. And if you do, you get a custom video of your choice. Or you can donate via Ko-fi as well. Till next time. Did you know that you can help my channel by watching another one of my videos? Go ahead, you know you want to.